So a YouTuber called Magic Cat uploaded some videos where he did what he called the worst shot challenge in Cuphead. Where he fought every boss in the game on expert mode with nothing equipped except for the worst weapon to try to kill them with. I myself saw that and thought, oh, I'll give it a try. So I did. And it was mostly fine, but some of the levels were absolutely terrible. But don't worry... We'll get to that. I'm going to tell you how long each of them took me to do as well, because Magic Cat also did that, so... Yeah. Just sit back and enjoy it. Also, yes, I died a few times on the back. Twice, actually. Not the best way to start a challenge, right, is it? Now, the good thing about the root pack is that they're extremely simple. I mean, the only problem I ran into was Weepy the Onion, and how his tears are very hard to see sometimes. Other than that, really the rest of the fight was a cakewalk. As you can see here, it is still very easy to shoot the carrots. Sometimes they last a little longer than you would expect them to, but really, no problems arise from this. But it is the root pack, the first boss in the game, so I don't know what any of you people expected. So here's Goopy Legrand, and unsurprisingly, he was the easiest boss of the run. I mean, I usually find the root pack to be easier than him, but hey... This was the only boss I didn't die to. The I mean, you can't shoot him when he's in the air, but to be fair, he's on the ground so often, and he's so simple, that really, I have, I have almost nothing to say about him. In fact, I'm just going to speed up the footage, so, yeah. Still looks easy, doesn't it? So, Ruby and Croaks, they were the first boss bosses, I guess, to, to really serve a real challenge. They Obviously, they didn't take me as long as many of the other ones, because, once again, it's Ruby and Croaks. They're still not that difficult, but using Twist Up was not good. Twist Up is already very hard to aim with, and the fact that I can only stand near them when they're not attacking does not help me because of the fact that I have to keep going back and forth during this first phase. Now, during the second phase, I can pretty much always hit one of them, so that's good. The second phase wasn't much more difficult than it normally is. But the third phase... Oh, God, the third phase. The third phase took an awful long amount of time to kill, because of the fact that in order to not get hit by platforms spawning on me... I had to stand on the left side of the screen. Basically meaning that for any time I attacked, I was barely doing any damage. And I couldn't even do it for that long of a time. So basically the third phase lasted a ridiculously long amount of time. Ugh, this was ugly. But it wasn't too bad overall. Tag me Carnation. It, it's ca it's it's Cagney Carnation. What what do you want me to say? Um, the good thing is I figured out that if you aim down to one side with twist up, it can go a very decent, not a very decent, actually just a very good for twist up. That is horizontal distance. So that was my main way of attacking him. The good thing as well is once again. Twist Up has a lot of shots, so the minions, while it was awkward to aim at them, they weren't too bad to deal with. Now, in his second phase, it's very easy to dodge. You know, every, every, he doesn't spawn minions anymore, so I really didn't have anything that was hard to aim at. And once again, because I figured out how to aim a far distance with Twist Up, I didn't have to worry about shooting him at point blank. This was very uninteresting. Baroness Von Bonbon was the first one to legitimately suck to do. First of all, this muffin here. Now, obviously, the random minions, this was the worst one to get. Not because he's hard to dodge, but because it was just really weird to aim at him. I, it, I, it was basically either I shoot up or I'm on the platform and I shoot up. Well, it's twist up. You know, you're always shooting up with twist up. But it was very awkward and it took very long just to kill this stupid Muffin Man. I don't like it. Now, the Gumball Machine, the good thing is you're, you're always going to be hitting the Gumball Machine. 
But let me just say, I'm going to mention a problem that Twist Up has with this fight, and the, the gumball machine is one of the most obvious instances where this becomes apparent. The fact that you cannot shoot the jelly beans without just standing on the platform and aiming down. So if you're anywhere on the ground, if you're just moving in general, you have to dodge the jelly beans. There is nothing you can do about them, unless they're pink, and then you can parry them. But they get in the way so much when fighting Baroness Von Bon Bon with Twist Up. It is so annoying, and I absolutely hated doing this. Now about the Baroness herself, obviously I want to be using my supers to do as much damage as I can, because in order for me to avoid her attacks, I have to be running all over the place, because they home in on you. And the fact that there's a giant peppermint that comes in and makes it even harder to avoid, you know, th there's there's a decent amount. But for Twist Up, it sucks because the fact that I can only shoot her if I'm standing still on the platform and aiming to the right and down, or if I'm on the ground right in front of her and I'm just aiming straight forward, which will make the shots go up into her. Either way, this was awful. This was a horrible combination, and I died many, many times trying to do this. Now, this one was also not enjoyable, but, I mean, hey, just think about this for a moment. It's the combination of my least favorite shot and my least favorite boss. I absolutely hate this boss. He is so annoying. He is, ugh, the overlap with the roller coaster and everything else. It makes dodging very, very difficult to do on this level. But hey, guess what? I'm using the weakest weapon in the game so he's going to last way longer than he would with anything else. I would have better luck killing him with a flashlight. This was awful. And, hey, you know what else is fun? The fact that the minions, well, guess what? With Chaser, it's hard to hit the minions, not because it's actually hard to hit them, but because if you're aiming for the boss, which takes up most of the screen in this phase, then guess what? you can end up hitting the minions, but if you're trying to hit the minions because they're going to kill you, that's also difficult to do because of the fact that Chaser might just hold in on the boss. It is very unreliable. Ugh, this was rough. No, that was not an intentional bun. But hey, so this phase being my least favorite in the fight with the horse, guess what else? This was awful as well. Because once again, the reason why this is so annoying is because of the fact that the roller coaster comes in, makes it so that you're always moving, and it makes it so you have to jump over some guys. But the fact that Beppy is shooting at you with a horse, sometimes straight, makes it so, so much worse than usual. Because guess what? Again, you have to jump, but sometimes the shots will go right into you. But the good thing is, in this case, I killed the phase very quickly, so... Yay. Now, this... Oh boy. Now, the reason why I'm standing to the left here is because I want my shots to be able to go in and hit some of the penguins on the left, but I also want to be ahead enough so that I can stop jumping for a decent amount of time and not just fall off in, into the roller coaster. So, you know, once again, the only thing that I have to do here is shoot these two penguins on the left. But with, but, with, but with Chaser, sorry, I almost said Charge. Charge is my favorite weapon, by the way. But with Chaser, it's unreliable because you yourself can't aim the weapon. You just have to let it do its thing for you. So, yeah, this phase was still terrible because I had to stay on top for as long as I could. And even then, Chaser does so little damage, it lasted for goddamn ever. And hey, speaking of a fight that not only took me forever, but also took me forever in terms of how long it actually took me to beat the boss. Okay, that didn't sound very descriptive, but I mean in terms of... Yeah, this took me over seven hours to do. And even then, the winning attempt is over six minutes long, because guess what? Spread, being the weapon with the worst range, is unusable on a boss that forces you to be constantly moving around on platforms all over the place. So hey, in order to dodge things, I made, I had to make it so that I was unable to shoot the guy. But even then... Ugh. 
it lasted six minutes. If I am to move around at all, then I can't hit him. Basically meaning that this fight will go on as long as the day does if I don't shoot him all the time. So I had to be at point blank for the entire fight if I wanted to actually win. But hey, guess what? This is one of the bosses where it's the worst to be standing close to him because of the fact that the platforms are random and you have to keep jumping on them to avoid his attacks while not falling into the abyss. So, the fact that these little fire guys keep jumping at me made it so that I had to move sometimes. Now, this phase wasn't as bad as the first one, not because it wasn't extremely annoying. Every phase in this fight, the spread is awful, which is ironic because, for me, this is normally one of the easiest bosses in the game. But, wow, is spread just... This was one of the worst combinations. This was so bad that I really don't know what to say except for just ranting. Like, look at this! Look at this! In order to do anything without dying, I have to move! But then again... Oh, and here, at the third phase. So I want to be shooting at the beginning as soon as I can, but take off my finger from the fireball. Because, look at this. These fireballs that he's shooting at me, which take like two frames of animation to telegraph, by the way, so, if I'm standing close to him, I get shot instantly and I can die. Well, hey, you know what's fun about that? With spread shot? If the fireballs get shot, they explode in the cardinal directions to create more obstacles which can hit you. So, that's fun. So, I can't even shoot at this part at all. Not only because I can't stand close to him, but because of the fact that I'm going to hit the fireballs and kill myself if I do shoot. But so I have to wait until he stops shooting the fireballs, which is when he his middle head becomes a giant flamethrower, like right here. And so the only way to do damage reasonably fast at that part is to be underneath him because of the fact that, um... So, so once again, spread, it does a lot of damage, but only if every shot out of, like, five is hitting the boss so and if, if i was on the top which would make it easier to dodge then i would only be hitting like two at a time like right there which is why i have to be at the bottom so that i can actually do damage to him decently fast but then again i can't even do it for very long because of the fact that he'll start shooting the fireballs again this was unbearable by the way at this point in the footage i'm playing it at um, nine times the speed, and it's still lasting for a ridiculously long amount of time, despite the fact that I've sped it up so much. Oh, boy. Ugh. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh, and by the way, this didn't take me the longest amount of time. Doing Rumor Honey Bottoms after Grim Matchstick felt awesome, because hey, guess what? I'm fighting another auto-scroll boss with randomly generated platforms. But the good thing is, this one was much, much easier. Because guess what? I have Twist Up, which despite being awful to aim with, can actually hit things without you having to stand and add them away from their shots. So, the fact that I was able to just do this was pretty nice. I really, I mean, it's, once again, it's weird to hit this guy, especially because in this case, he's below you because you don't want to be in front of him. So, you don't want to be in front of him. But yeah, no, it's, it was weird to aim back downward at this guy. But even then, during Rumor Honeybottom's phase two, this was, this phase was easy. You're, it, I just had to shoot at her like normal because the shots would go up and hit her anyway because she's at the top of the screen. No problem. Now about the third phase, it was harder because, I, I mean, it was weird to aim. But I, I guess I just got lucky and ended up shooting her in enough to kill her quickly during the third phase because really dodging was annoying here, but uh, it was over fast enough. Finally, after several bosses, we get the triumphant and absolutely glorious return of the lobber, which is impossible to hit anything with. 
that, hey, don't worry. If you were sad about the fact that you didn't see Lobber very much, we're going to be seeing it a lot. We're, we're going to be seeing it a lot in this challenge. It is everywhere after this point. Like, I use it for m most of the bosses because it, it really is just that bad of a weapon. But hey, guess what? The fact that Captain Brinybeard sits in one spot and you have to only be able to shoot him at that spot with a gun that is hard to aim with because it falls to the ground and has a bad fire rate. So I can't even deal with his minions either. Basically, everything in this level was a pain in the ass to hit. It was not very good. But hey, at least it's Captain Brinybeard who is my favorite boss, so I, I, I enjoyed doing this, so... That's fun. Now, about the ship at the last part, that wasn't so bad either. Um, in this case, it basically just parry the laser and keep doing damage to the lobber. To the lobber. With the lobber is what I meant to say. Keep doing damage with the lobber at that point, and while it will take a little longer than usual, it's fine. There's really nothing to worry about here. Sally's stage play was pretty much just as easy as she usually is. I mean, she is a laughably easy threat as compared to most of the bosses in World 3, Pink Roll Isle 3, to begin with. But hey, Lobber made it slightly more difficult. I mean, she jumps around a decent amount and Lobber has awful range, so I did have to stand next to her, but... That, that, that was it, really. That, that, that's, that's it. I have so little to say about this, I'm literally just going to fast forward through the rest of the fight now, so... See you in, like, five seconds. Burner Vermin is also a very easy Isle 3 boss, but hey, he was slightly harder than Sally, despite the fact that it didn't take me as long to defeat him. So... Uh, just, once again, it, it, I mean, I really, he lasts longer, which, for his second phase, is bad, and then in his fourth, fourth, in his third phase, I guess, the, the ghosts, I mean, you can hit them with Chaser, but they're not even a problem to begin with, they're, I have nothing, absolutely nothing to say about this level. But I do have stuff to say about the Phantom Express, because while I was legitimately terrified to come up to this level, because I thought, after fighting Grim Matchstick, it made me think about which bosses I thought were going to be absolutely horrible, and I thought this was going to be one of, if not the worst one. Maybe even worse than Grim himself. But no, actually, despite the fact that, well, it didn't take me as long, this was still an absolutely atrocious combination, I'm pretty sure. The fact that it took me only an hour and 14 minutes, less than Baroness Von Bonbon, even, that would... I... I it was a fluke. There's, there's... I have no explanation. I did not think it would take me this short of a time. Because in the first phase, it's hard to hit the eyes because Lobra has an awful fire rate. In the second phase, it's hard to hit this guy because the fact that in order to get the highest, um... Height with Lobber, you have to jump, but you can't jump because it'll hit his head, and his head damages you. But, I mean, if you, you can jump at the sides, obviously, that's safer because the fact that the bricks that the pumpkins drop at you, they can be parried, and he, his hitbox, well, it does move. There are some times where you're safe to jump and hit the brick, but this third phase, this third phase was the worst part of the fight with against these pistons. I guess. But yeah. No, these things... This was the worst part, and it still wasn't even absolutely terrible. I mean, it was terrible, but not, like, undoable. I am just as shocked as the rest of you that, once again, this fight didn't take me seven hours to do. But it, it's just hard to hit the ghosts, and... You have to move over a little bit to hit the pistons, but that's it. That That's really it. And then the final phase, which I thought was going to be the hardest, ended up actually being the easiest one because there's a little trick called don't parry the end of the train until he's on the left side of the screen or just close to you in general. And 
Well, you don't even have to worry about getting hit with the fire because the fire always goes up. So just look out for it, and it's, which isn't that difficult to do, and you'll be okay. I know. Shocker, shocker. The Phantom Express was easy. Not really, but easier than a lot of other bosses. I was so surprised. Now, don't pretend to be surprised by the fact that King Dice did not take me very long at all. This guy is actually one of the easiest bosses in the game. And to all those people that try to say that he is one of the hardest, I mean, why? Why do you think he's so hard? It's literally just a bunch of simple mini-bosses. Now, the reason why I use Chip's Bedig in here is not because I actually like fighting him, it's just because there was a heart there, which is going to be ironic because I'm going to end up taking a lot of damage while fighting him here. But hey, my my preferred order is actually Mr. Wheezy, Pippin Dot, and then Perloetta, which I'm going to do two out of three of those, so whatever. Now, Chip's bed again, obviously, with the fact that I only was able to equip the worst shot, was harder than usual because of the fact that you can't use Smoke Bomb on him. That being said, still, I managed to pursue through and beat him. That's... I mean... I took damage, though, so... Despite the fact that I beat him, it was a bit of a ooh moment. Like, did I really just do that badly on Chip's fucking bed again? <laughs> yes, I did. Now, Pippin Dot, Perloetta, and King Dice himself, they were all just pretty regular. I mean, yeah, Lobber, once again, it's hard to aim with Lobber, but with these bosses, th th these three, it really wasn't that hard to fight them any differently than it regularly is. And then again, these three mini-bosses are so pathetically easy that it was a very, very simple challenge to do. For King Dice, that is. Okay, the fact that the Devil and King Dice took me exactly the same amount of time to defeat, with the same weapon, by the way, in the Worst Shot Challenge, is absolutely hilarious to me, considering how much harder the Devil is than King Dice. But, oh well, I guess this is a thing that happened. And, well, the Devil wasn't that hard to do like this, but don't get me wrong, it was still a good challenge. But once again, the thing with Lobber is it has a worse fire rate, but the... The thing is, it lands on the ground, so actually, shooting the imps was not difficult at all. They weren't much of a problem here. Unless, of course, he used the snake attack, but then again, that's still not much of a problem, because you can just jump over them and dash into the side of the screen, so... Really, this first phase was not an issue at all. The second phase was even easier because of the fact that the devil takes up pretty much the entire screen now. All I have to do is just jump and then I'll be hitting him in the eyes, which with Lobber is good because Lobber, despite the fact that it is a god-awful weapon, it does decent damage because, well, I guess it needs to if it wants anyone to use it, which don't even use it anyway because it, it sucks, but oh well. Yeah, no, the second phase was just as easy as it normally is. The third phase, as usual, was the hardest part of this, due to the fact that with Lobber, it was hard to hit the henchmen, and it was also hard to hit the little imp bats that he shoots in the, out of his face at the top of the screen. I was unable to hit them, so, I mean, even if I tried to hit them, which I would be able to, I hit, his, I hit Satan's eyes instead, so I just had to dodge. I could just dodge, which... It's doable, so despite the fact that this was the hardest phase, it was it was not so bad. And about this this last phase, where it's literally just he cries, it makes your victory taste a little better because of the fact that he makes Satan cry like a baby. Yeah, that that th this this is just as easy as it usually is. Yep, and there we go, we beat the devil with the worst shots. But don't worry, I'm doing the DLC bosses as well. So yay. Now, good old Glumstone, he has a very, very apparent problem with using Lobber in his fight. And even if you don't use Lobber in his fight, you can definitely still tell why Lobber is awful here. The gnomes! They are everywhere. And once again, Lobber has a bad fire rate, so it's awful for dealing with boss's minions. So basically, 
I have to go out of my way to shoot these stupid gnomes with a bad gun that fires at a horrible rate, so if I miss, I have to keep shooting and just miss a lot of damage on the boss. But hey, guess what? The good thing is, I can get past this first phase quite quickly because Glumstone takes up half the screen. Now, about the second phase... Yeah, no, it's also bad because the, the puppets, they're, they're just moving around. They're high up on the screen a lot of the time. And the fact that the gnomes are everywhere and they just keep jumping out of the ground means I can't even shoot them like normal. So I just have to keep running around and dodge everything that's happening during this absolute mess of the second phase. It's fun, though. But, you know, this second phase is a bit of a mess, and I don't think anyone's going to deny that. Now, the third phase for Guamstone, the good thing is it's relatively easy to avoid everything here. But also, shooting this guy, this esophagus this thing basically it it's hard to do because you basically just have to jump up and down and the lobber bounce into him as he moves closer to you that's really it it's just awkward to aim at him because you can't so just keep jumping and he'll eventually be defeated now the good thing about the moonshine mob is i just really really enjoy this fight so despite the fact that uh, Twist Up was hard to aim with, especially on this first phase, and very especially on the second phase, because, don't worry, we'll get to that, but, yeah, on this first phase, it was hard to hit this guy, because he just kept moving around, but the good thing is I can stand at the bottom of the screen to take more advantage of the fact that Twist Up always goes up, so that was my main strategy, to stay down. But if he is to be underneath me, shoot downward as well. So, you know, because you can have an arc. And obviously these caterpillars, they need to be destroyed as quickly as possible because they move fast and they're just massive obstacles. But hey, you know what's a good thing? I can actually duck under these uh, fly bee minion goons if I have to because they, their hitboxes aren't actually on the ground. So, that's good. But the second phase, this part, this was actually the hardest part of the fight for me. Not, not phase three, not even, well, you know, but this, this was the hard part. And the reason for this is because of the fact that not only can I not stop moving because of the fact that that gramophone is shooting lasers at me, I can't even dash through them because I don't have smoke bomb. But I have to keep moving, and the fact that I can only really shoot up means that I can only be on the bottom platform in order to deal damage. So I have to keep moving back to the bottom platform if I want to shoot the lady, at which case the gramophone is going to force me to move again. So it was really just an endless cycle of annoying running back and forth. Now this part was easier, but still not good with Twist Up because of the fact that it was way harder to shoot the giant, I guess, balls of people fighting each other. So I had to, so mo in most of my tries where I made it to this part, I actually had to worry about dodging just a bunch, a bunch of balls all over the screen. And it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. But the good thing is, they're predictable, so despite the fact that they're everywhere, you can still avoid them most of the time. And also good is that the anteater's mouth is usually is usually above you because one of the three positions is the ground, but the other two are above, so you can just shoot right normally and, well, you'll hit him. So that's good. Now, it was really easy to avoid the snail's attacks, but as usual, it was very tense. Because of the fact that Twist Up, I couldn't hit him consistently with it, so I wasn't doing very much damage. And he was attacking a lot, so despite the fact that it was very easy to keep dodging, I was nervous as hell at this part. Lobber! Again! Yay! We get to see Lobber again, but just look at this for a second. When this guy is at the top of the screen, it's hard to hit him if you're not standing directly underneath him. However... It's easier to hit him when he comes to the side of the screen, but that's when he attacks, so you're focusing more on dodging the attacks that he's sending out at you. All the while, you have to watch out for these tennis balls, and once that plane comes by in the background and starts shooting the fire hydrants, you also have to shoot these fire hydrants which home in on you, 
And you have to do it with Lobber, too. The shots that fall to the ground and have a bad fire rate. So it's very hard to hit these stupid fire hydrants unless you sit in one spot and shoot upward and then back up. Which then means that you're more likely to get hit by another attack because you're not going to be moving to try to avoid it. Now, phase two of this fight was not much harder than usual. I mean, it was harder to hit them, but... I mean, it's literally... It, you can keep shooting straight. You're going to eventually hit them. And you keep hitting them. I mean... Th this wasn't much more difficult than usual. It, but once again, it was still annoying to hit them. Because even though it would happen anyway, they don't die as quickly as they usually do. And then there's this part. The part that's very hard for me to do. Anyway, like, no, I'm not even joking. It's hard for me to do regardless of what shot I'm using. This part is just so disorienting, it messes with me completely. And I end up taking way too much damage unnecessarily. This bitch! Oh my god. But anyway, it actually wasn't as hard as the other phases. Not as in, it wasn't difficult. It was harder than phase two, obviously. But that's not saying much. Phase 1 was definitely the worst part of this fight because you actually have trouble hitting the guy here. You can still hit the boss no matter where you are on the screen. It's just annoying to do so. So Mortimer Freeze, I do think he's the easiest fully fleshed out DLC boss. You know, the King's Leap, the secret boss not counting. Don't worry, we're going to get to that secret boss. We're going to fight him. But Mortimer Freeze... Yeah, no, he wasn't so bad in this challenge. Obviously, his first phase was really annoying because of the fact that he could just do that icicle attack while you're trying to jump up and hit him. But here's what I did instead. I instead just waited for him to use another attack, and then I shot at him. I mean, it, it, it doesn't kill him that quickly, but it's more reliable. I do think that the best way to do that is to wait until you know he's not going to do the icicle attack to actually try to hit him. Now, his second phase is hard, but it's just hard normally. The using of Lava here actually didn't affect the gameplay of the second phase that much. With the exception of the fact that it's harder to kill the popsicles, that's really it. This was just, like, fighting him normally. And then his final phase with the Spongebob-looking snowflake is already really easy to fight normally, but with Lava... It's still really easy to fight because of the fact that you can just stay on the higher platforms and shoot him normally. I have nothing to say about this. Yes, you're reading this right. Chef Saltbaker took me 9 hours and 29 minutes to do. But to be fair, if you look at this, you can probably tell why. What is happening? What is this absolute clusterfuck on the screen? And guess what? You can't even aim at him properly because you're using lava, so you have to be underneath him or sh jumping and shooting diagonally in order to hit him. Basically, during this first phase, the entire thing is just a huge mess, and you have to navigate through it to be able to stand in, two sp in one of two specific positions so that you can shoot this bitch in the head. What doesn't help is how long it takes, being, being like a minute, like, this lasts forever, too. And guess what? I have to last through it with enough health to survive the other phases, and while this is the worst part of the fight, the other phases aren't a joke, either, because you still have to survive through them. Now, about a second phase, it's still a mess, because you know what makes this so hard? The fact, well, it's not... Once again, it's not as hard as it, as uh, the first phase. But here's the thing. You can only shoot two of the pepper shakers because of the fact that Lobber can't get enough vertical distance to hit the two on the top. Basically meaning, despite the fact that you can only shoot two of the salt pepper, sorry, pepper shakers, which means that you are able to um, shoot Salt Baker, you still have a lot more obstacles than you normally would to deal with because you can't hit all of them. This third phase isn't very long and there isn't that much to worry about, but I did die here a few times, with the reasoning being that the hitbox on the two Salt statue things is a little wonky, but it's not too bad because it's still generally easy to dodge. Now this fourth phase here, 
At this point, I was just under high stress. I was extremely nervous that I was going to lose and have to go all the way back to the first phase. That which makes it harder to do this, even though this in itself isn't actually that difficult to do. It's, you really only have to look out for where the platforms are so you can jump on them and where Salt Baker is so that you can either parry or avoid him. Which, you know, that's kind of what you have to do. And the good thing is Salt Baker himself isn't so big here, so it really isn't too much of an issue. But man, I obviously dropped my controller here. But hey, guess what? It still wasn't over. I still had to do this secret boss. The Devil and Angel, which... I mean, so, if you don't know how this works, you're always facing the Devil. They switch places, and their attacks also switch places whenever you turn around. But here's the thing about doing this. Look at this! How was I supposed to do this with Lobber? I did it! It wasn't fun, it was an ordeal, it was awful, it sucked, and it was just really, really bad. Which is, I mean, that's just Lobber in general, so it's not much of a surprise, but... Man, did I, after defeating Chef Saltbaker and just feeling absolutely triumphant, I really did not need the shotgun blast to my confidence. This was just, uh, this was bad. It, it wasn't easy, it wasn't fun, it was just bad, it was miserable. But with that, I finished and I did all of the bosses in Cuphead on the hardest difficulty except this one because you can't customize the difficulty of this one. I did all the bosses in Cuphead on the hardest difficulty with the worst shots. I have truly mastered the game. Wow.